In the sports world, some countries dominate popular games people play. In the U.S., it's football and baseball. Nordic countries are known for skiing, and in South America, soccer rules. Canada has two culturally iconic sports, hockey and curling. About 80% of the curling players in the world are Canadians. This Olympic sport has enjoyed a growing grassroots movement throughout the country for centuries. The sport of curling actually originated in Scotland in the 1500s and then came over to Canada thereafter. The first curling club was established here in 1807 in the city of Montreal. Curling clubs have sprouted up across the country since then. Many people feel after churches and schools, the next facilities to build in their communities were curling clubs. Today, we're very proud to have over a thousand curling facilities in this country and over a million curlers in Canada. A mix of shuffleboard and chess on ice, curling is a competitive sport of precision, strategy, and energetic sweeping. A granite stone in the shape of a tea kettle is skillfully aimed on the ice at a target. Each shot builds to the final one called the hammer. Curling has its equipment, teams, competitions, rules, and scoring, as do other sports. But in this one, entry-level skills required are minimal, making curling an ageless sport and open to all levels of ability. Curling is truly a grassroots sport. It's a it's, it's very social sport. Uh, it's not un unusual or uncommon to go in curling clubs across the country and find people of all walks of life. Grandparents, children, families, all participating at their local curling clubs. It, it, it's very community oriented and in many rural communities it's what actually ties the fabric of that society together. Facilitating continuous grassroots growth of the sport is the Canadian Curling Association or CCA. A national amateur sports organization, the CCA has been the curling governing body since 1935. It oversees all aspects of the sport for 1,100 member curling clubs and growing, both nationally and worldwide. Association is very involved with helping our facilities across Canada grow the sport of curling in their communities. And grassroots development is very important to us. A couple of things that we do is a business of curling uh, operations program where we work with all of our curling clubs to assist them in, in their day-to-day -day operations, help them with recruitment and retention, uh, their ice making, anything else they need to become successful businesses in their communities. We also have a pretty uh, extensive certification program across uh, our country for various activities. The first one being coaching, which ranges from just simple club coach all the way to international competition coach and everything in between. The CCA promotes and nurtures the sport at every level, from recreational curling just for fun to league and all-star team play to developing national and Olympic athletes. It also sanctions and conducts curling competitions. Champions get their start at local curling clubs. Well, I started curling when I was 11 years old, just at a local curling club. And from there, I, I started playing high school curling and I had some success with that. We won the provincial curling championship and it just made me enjoy curling a bit more. And the success made me want to compete at a higher level. So I continued playing when I was in university and I was fortunate enough to represent my country at the World Curling Championships. The CCA helped us we went to compete in Japan and China with some of our expenses and also the sponsors helped us as well. The Briar is the Men's National Curling Championship, a premier event sanctioned and operated by the CCA. It attracts 250,000 paying enthusiastic spectators, a large TV audience and fan base, and major sponsors. Just like the Olympics, the Briar begins with opening ceremonies introducing teams representing the Canadian provinces and territories. They compete intensely on the ice for nine days. The winning team receives the Tankard Trophy and represents Canada in the Men's World Curling Championships. Becoming a Briar champion is, a, is truly a dream come true. Um, it's a sport in Canada that's soaked in history and tradition and to be a part of that select few is, is really something special. Uh, and how it's affected me personally, you know, it's a, it's a very high profile sport in this country. We get a lot of TV coverage, so we're, we're very recognized. People coming up and wishing us best of luck and saying they've been fans of ours for a long time. So it's, it's had a huge impact on my life professionally and personally. For elite curlers, wearing the tournament jacket is a great source of athletic and national pride. The Canadian Curling Association is the sole governing body for the sport of curling in Canada. And with that, we have a myriad of corporate goals. 
A few of those things that jump out to me are, are probably three things in particular. First and foremost, I want to try and get as many people to participate in the sport as we possibly can. Really grassroots development. Secondly is the Season of Champions. It's, it's one of the most prolific sport properties in the country. It includes the Tim Hortons Briar, the Scottish Tournament of Hearts, the Canada Cup. These are the type of events we want people to come and fill the stadiums and enjoy the sport. And lastly, we're an amateur sport body. Our success oftentimes is predicated on corporate sponsorship and support, and we welcome it. When we look at the opportunity for Ford with curling, we look at how well our brand can fit with the curling brand. And we've been involved with curling for 17 years, and when we think of the Canadian Curling Association and curling, we really look at a brand that stands for honesty, genuineness, and being approachable. And when we think of what Ford stands for in Canada, it's very, very similar. For more information, visit the Canadian Curling Association at curling.ca